So I got this um, red mini handheld game thing from AliExpress recently. Uh, it worked briefly and now it appears to have completely died. So I think, not sure which way is on or off, but uh, neither way does anything. So let's try and find out what's gone wrong. So I think the first thing to do is see if it's actually um, taking any current. So I've got my USB tester here and somewhere I have a cable. There we go. So let's plug this in. So that's interesting. We do appear to be drawing around 200 milliamps. So does it do anything when I turn on and off? Oh, absolutely nothing. So it's drawing current, but the on off switch doesn't do anything. Um, so that's kind of interesting. Um, there is a battery. So let's have a look at the battery, see what's going on with that. So it's one of these old cell phone type batteries that seem to be being, being used a lot for these kind of little uh, game type things. It was in the previous one I took apart. Um, so let's go on to voltage DC. Kind of kind of awkward. Come here. So our battery voltage, hmm, 0 0.27 volts. So 27 millivolts in our battery. So this battery is completely flat. Um, that's interesting. Let's take the battery out. I wonder if uh, if it works without the battery. Let's plug that in, and still get nothing. And we're still drawing 200 milliamps. So not really something going on, but it's definitely not working. What I might try doing is just powering it directly from these battery terminals. So let's see if we can wire that up. And move that out of the way. Um, I've got my power supply here. Let's just um, yeah, let's wire this up. So which one's plus and minus? So it was like plus, and uh, that one is minus. Okay, let's give this some juice. It's quite loud. Got a fan in here that uh, seems very noisy. So let's turn that on. Hello, where's my output voltage? Ah, well, that's interesting. You can see this uh, constant current has been limited immediately. I did set this quite low, but um, let's see. Yeah, well, that's, that's no good, is it? You're not getting uh, anything. Um, so I think maybe there's a short there. Let's, uh, let's have a look. Certainly didn't want to power it. So. Bring in the multimeter. Switch um, to continuity. See what's going on. Well, it's dead short. So that's not going to work, is it? Well, let's open this up and see what's going on. Obviously, something's gone horribly wrong. Okay, well, that was fairly painless. Let's try not to lose the screws. Um, stick them in this little compartment here. And you can see here the problem with uh, directly putting screws into plastic. All the plastic's being worn away by this screw. Well, I can see something interesting straight away. I mean, that doesn't look right, does it? We shouldn't have a big burn mark on our PCB. Well, let's, uh, let's get the PCB undone. Well, oh, look at that. That's not a very happy IC, is it? That's completely burnt up. Um, I suspect that's probably some kind of voltage regulator. I mean, there's not much on these PCBs. So we have the blob chip. Got some flash storage, crystal, got a clicky button, speaker. Um, yeah, not a lot to these things, is there? But that looks like the uh, thing that's gone horribly wrong. Our, looks like our voltage regulator has um, burnt itself up to a crisp. Um, interesting. So 
What if we just remove this and then um, try applying voltage directly and see what happens? Since we're about to look at a whole bunch of PCBs, let's do a shout out to PCBWay who do all the PCBs for this channel. Check out our link in the description. They're really great. So unfortunately my microscope stopped recording so we lost quite a lot of footage. However, there were some interesting findings. So if we look here, this is the burnt area of the PCB from the other side. Now there was this interesting lump of plastic. Um, that confused me slightly, but then I realised it was actually one of these foam spaces that had got really hot and melted. Now what I've seen so far is there's a complete short on the battery supply to the, um, to the input of this switch. Now, so what we see is on this pin here, there's a dead short to ground. So this test pad here shorts to ground completely. Um, so that's why the battery is completely flat. Now, I imagine that's why these two components burnt out. This one was kind of okay. So this was a diode. I believe this one might have been a diode as well. So it's a, it's a interesting circuit. So we have the fire volts coming from the USB, it comes along here, there's a bit of decoupling, a test point, comes here, comes across one diode, and then comes across another, and then this connects through to this trace, which goes up here, it's another test point, it goes into this pin of the switch. When you turn it on, these two pins are connected, and it supplies voltage to the pin here, which is the input pin, of this 662k 3.3 volt voltage regulator and that's the output pin with a couple of decoupling capacitors so if we trace this um, this trace back so that's coming from the 5 volt supply through a couple of diodes this goes all the way around all the way around and eventually if you follow the trace all the way around the pcb there's a couple of um, jumper zero ohm resistors it's a single-sided board they've gone for maximum cheapness here comes around here and eventually we end up at this pin which is the positive pin of the battery so somewhere around here there is a short so it could be this um, this capacitor maybe um, I think that's the only real component we can see on this trace now so what I'm going to do you can see I've put a blob of solder here on this test point so this is the input to the voltage regulator so what we'll do is try feeding 5 volts into this, see if we get 3.3 volts on the output of that. So I'll do that now, I'll tack some wires on, so a wire here for ground and a wire here for 5 volts. And let's see what happens. Well, slightly disappointing. So we do have, if I measure our little tacked on things, that's uh, 5 volts coming in here. Unfortunately, coming out here on the output, I'm not getting 3.3 volts. So this um, this IC here should be a 3.3 volt regulator, but um, I'm only getting 1.5 uh, volts. So it should be giving 3.3 volts, but it's not. So let's try something else. I'm gonna move this wire I've tacked on from the output, from the, sorry, the input, I stick it on the output so I'm hoping I'll find a test point somewhere that I can just yeah I can just connect it to here and then we'll just inject 3.3 volts straight into the system so let's try that quickly so let's just put a quick blob of solder on here okay and then we'll just move our little wire from here and we'll put it over here Try not to short various things. Left my wire a bit too big. Okay, that's kind of connected. Let's see what happens now. Connect it up. Okay, interesting. So we do have the blue light showing it. Not getting any sound coming out. I'd expect some sound. No sound. Uh, let's check the voltage. Make sure we do have 3.3 volts coming in. Yep, 3.3 volts. Mm, not looking very promising. So I'm now injecting 3.3 volts directly. 
and there's nothing coming out. What I'm going to do is reconnect the screen, see if anything's happening at all. Oh my goodness me. Wow. Okay. I mean, I'll have to zoom out quite a bit for you to see this. I'm going to have to switch to the other camera. But actually, we have action. So we are actually getting things showing up. So we're back on the uh, main camera. And as you can see, we're injecting 3.3 volts straight in. And it's all working nicely. Well, it's working to a certain extent. Let's, uh, let's just move this out of the way. Put some buttons back on. One set of buttons, another set of buttons, and then we've got these buttons down here. And then what? Come desoldered. Let me solder this wire back on quickly. One moment, please. Okay, back in action. Now then, let's make sure we get English. Okay. Let me go down. Oops. Down and then one of these is start, start, start. No, nope. that one. Start. Okay, so all of these games. Um, let's just do Super Mario or oh, Super Mario Brothers. Okay, so that's working nicely, but we have no sound, which is somewhat annoying. And I, yeah. Okay, well, I don't know how to play this, especially with the buttons all over the place. Um, let's just reset. There's no, there's no setting to um, change it to no sound. Uh, I do wonder if maybe this speaker has gone wonky. Um, it does seem soldered up okay. Uh, actually, I've got some speakers somewhere. One second. So let's quickly desolder this one, which I think probably isn't working. Well, maybe it's maybe the speaker's fine, but something else has gone wrong. But it seems likely it's going to be the um, the speaker. So. Oh, why won't you do solder? That's one. That's horrible solder on this board. Okay, that's two. Let's put a bit of leaded solder on. Okay, that's one bit. Another bit, nice bit of leaded solder. Much better than the uh, yucky stuff. Right, uh, I don't think it really matters which one's positive or negative. Let's just do this one in. This one can go in here. Okay, not the greatest job, but okay. And then that one should go there. I'm still not hearing any sound. Well, that's very interesting. No sound at all. Have we got the volume turned down? Nope. Interesting. Well, further investigations required on the actual sound then, that's very intriguing. Um, I would have expected something to come out. I can see a little component here. We may have to get it under the microscope to troubleshoot sound again. Because um, I wonder if that's gone and that's why we're not getting any sound. Actually, let's just disconnect the power. Do a quick continuity check while we're here. See if that's the problem. So. Looking at the traces, um, gosh, where is where are these traces going? That's going there. I think that might be coming to the positive one. Yeah, so that goes to that end. Does it go to the other end? No. Interesting. There is nothing going through that. It's probably a resistor. Oh, actually, maybe it is just a resistor. Let me just measure the resistance. Maybe they had it way too loud and had to do something about it. I don't think that is a resistor. I think that's doing nothing. Let's see. Oh, maybe it's a 1K resistor. Hard to measure. Okay, so that is a resistor, and it is, if I can measure it successfully, looks like it's 20 ohms maybe, or 15 ohms, it's very tiny. Well, okay, 
we need to investigate the speaker issue then. Something else is going wrong with the speakers. Um, well, we'll do that later once we fix the rest of the board. Um, sound should work, but we'll do it, get it under the microscope. See what's going on. Why do we have no sound? We'll find out later. Now, I just got to thinking, there is actually only one component on this long trace from the battery. It's this capacitor here. I think we should try desoldering this capacitor and see if our short disappears. So let's power up the soldering iron and see what happens if we remove that. So we'll just put a bit of leaded solder onto this and hopefully we'll be able to just scoop this capacitor off. There is a massive ground plane, but there we go. That's our capacitor removed. If I can get it off my soldering iron. Okay, let's just clean this up a bit. Right. Now let's see if the short has disappeared. Maybe it's just the capacitor that failed and then blew everything else up. So on continuity, let's test these two. There is no short. Okay, so it was just that capacitor which I've got here. Let's, um, let's bring this poor fellow back into the picture. So there's our dodgy capacitor. Let's just see, is he shorted? Oops, well he's, he's vanished now. Oh, there he is. Okay, let's bring him back. Now, where's he gone? Bloody thing. Okay, found him. Let's, uh, let's grab him. Put him back where we can see him. There you go. Let's, let's see. Is this little capacitor shorted? I suspect it is. Let's try and do this without him flying off the table. Oh, maybe not. Kind of hard. It keeps... Oh, jeez. <laughs> well, anyway, if we go back to here, we don't have a short now between the positive and the ground. So that's disappeared. No short there. Let's double check. Got, um, got that there. No, no short at all. Oh, oh, there's the capacitor. Found him again. I am going to measure this capacitor. I'm determined to actually measure is this capacitor shorted so let's come here let's move him into a shot okay come on well he doesn't seem to be shorted no there's no short at all is there my multimeter oops my multimeter is not beeping at all I wonder if this was just some dodgy soldering. Let's see, come here. Oops. I mean, there's a small beep, and then um, it stops, but I don't think it's shorted. That's very interesting. I wonder, was it just some really naff soldering right here that was shorting these two together? It didn't look like it, but it is entirely possible. Um, anyway. The soldering is pretty bad, but I've got a replacement. I couldn't find one in my bits, so I've got a replacement um, voltage regulator coming. But now the uh, now the shorts disappeared, so there's no. If we use this test point, check with ground, there is no short. So that was the underlying problem, but the uh, the voltage regulator has blown as well, so that's not great. We'll um, we'll check what's going on with that. And I just realised I was measuring the wrong thing. It's uh, it's this test point. So that test point and ground, there are no shorts now. So that's great. Um, yeah, so interesting circuit. But uh, we'll get a replacement for the voltage regulator. I will do something about the battery charging. I don't think you should just use a couple of diodes for battery charging. That seems exceptionally dodgy. So we'll fix that as well. Um, yeah, components should arrive soon.